This is Tags from War Jeepney and welcome again to another episode we'll be doing a back rep, a solo back rep that is again with the uh, solo uh, rules for Warhammer Underworlds. So uh, this time we'll be uh, playing the third battle plan, it's uh, Besieged. So we've already covered Rampage and uh, Desecration so we'll be using the last one which is uh, yeah Besieged. And in this scenario, um, the story, more or less, is that the former Crusher is trying to escape. So for the setup, uh, we need to place the former Crusher in one of the uh, edge hexes in the shorter <coughs> edged uh, side. So th this side, I'll be uh, placing him here. And the farthest uh, hex from that will be his exit and you need to mark it with a wound token so for that one uh, the scenario uh, is actually for the former crusher to escape and for us to uh, block his uh, exit or his escape now for the good guys that you'd be using here you'd be using uh, lady harrow's uh, i think this is the mourn flight and the reason we're choosing this warband is well not for any special reason aside that there are four members in it so we've already tried a warband with a sepulchral guard that uh, has a lot of members we've already tried a warband with the uh, force riders that has the least amount of uh, members so far in a warband so we'll be trying somewhere um, between uh, four and five just to get that uh, medium numbered warband and for the special rules of this uh, scenario or battle plan is we still have uh, desperate times where at the uh, end of a friendly fighter's uh, activation you can uh, give that uh, fighter one upgrade from your hand and the other special rule is that don't let it escape which gives us a chance to inspire a friendly fighter once the Formeroid Crusher is within four hexes of the uh, escape hex. And yeah, for this one, the Formeroid Crusher actually successfully um, escapes if he starts his activation in the exit hex. So that's uh, the gameplay so far, or at least the rules and the special rules that uh, govern the uh, battle plan. All right. So now we'll proceed with the usual deployment. We already have the board here, the former crusher there. And now we'll be placing the uh, objective uh, tokens. So for the first token, yeah, I think I'd want to place the first token here because I'm not planning on giving him a lot of tokens along the way. And now taking two hexes, I'll place it here. And last one is... Here, some something or somewhere that uh, would be out of his way. <coughs> Let's flip him over. Not that it uh, has something to do with the scenario. I just want to flip them over. Okay, and then we will we'll be we will now be uh, placing uh, the fighters, but we'll do that after getting our hand. So our hand is first card is a shared agony. Again, this deck was not made for this scenario. That's the standard deck that we have or that I've built. Uh, shared agony, a spectral charge, veil of grief, spirit blade, and soul harvest. So quite useful, I think. So let's uh, use, well, just put them here and now we proceed with the uh, deployment I'll be using or, or let's deploy uh, the widow uh, Kaifa here the uh, anguished one here the screaming maiden here and someone that could intercept the former right crusher Lady Harrow herself right there and that's it that's for our deployment let's go for the uh, initiative white dice for the mourn flight black dice for <coughs> the former pressure and since he's just one he's already there he gains a bonus uh, 
crit and he goes first. So the movement of the uh, Formoid Crusher or at least the uh, keyword priority would be uh, insurmountable followed by Crusher, Breaker and lastly Advance. So for insurmountable he will be able to make that uh, move which enables him to uh, move I think twice yeah so he can do the move action twice since uh, no one is adjacent to him and that is three so and it should be the shortest route going here so as much as you can make uh, straight movements uh, one two three and then one two three okay So once he steps here, he actually does his crusher reaction. So this is removed. And then afterwards, once this is removed from the battlefield as a result of the crusher reaction, he can make an attack. And that attack... Yeah, so I guess we get to choose to whom that attack is targeted. I think it would be best if it's targeted to 1, 2, 3, 4, no, it's too far. To her, since she's not that close. So let's do that. How many dice? One die. No hammers, please. Okay, no hammer. Only for defense, crit, and so as if it mattered. But <coughs> that's the uh, activation of a oh, weight. We still have reactions. Since he ended up within a four, someone can be inspired. So I'm choosing Lady Harrow since. Oh, wait. Maybe I should. Widow Kaitha? So that we can move one, two, three, four. Yeah, we can do that. So let's inspire four, five. One, two, three. Yeah. Let's inspire Lady Kaifa. The one furthest. Just so she can make it to former eight question okay <clears throat> so now it's our turn or oh, at least the power phase um, are we playing any cards any card any card no 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 So, yeah, there's nothing that we can play, not even the shared agony. Um, so let's uh, start our activation with uh, Lady Kaifa, the uh, inspired version of her. So movement is not now 5, uh, one of the reasons I wanted her to be inspired, so she makes it to the former Raid Crusher. And if this uh, fighter has no more has uh, no movement tokens, place this fighter in an empty hex. That's one of the new actions that she gets. So I think <clears throat> I'll just charge. Here. Yeah, there. <clears throat> So I'll be charging and <clears throat> hopefully we get swords. Okay, we did. <clears throat> so we get uh, uh, support for one and then um, a sword rolling for the defense of the former treasure. Hope he misses. Damn it! Okay, but we got two, so it cancels one. And. <clears throat> Three damage actually goes through. Should have played this. But anyway, so we deal three damage to the former Crusher, 
and we place what's this oh uh, yeah <coughs> charge token to a lady or widow <laughs> kaifa now it's the formeroid uh, oh so it's the end of our activation um lady kaifa now can have an upgrade i think we should put in in, 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 in veil of grief <coughs> So that uh, she gets uh, one more wound and would be surviving a breaker attack, which is the only thing that could happen next turn. So now it's the Ephemerate Crusher's turn, and with that foresight, we now deal uh, 3 damage to Lady uh, oh, uh, Widow Kaifa, which uh, she survives because she has now 4 life. Alright. Now, power phase. Um, 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 um. Okay, I'm going to give Spectral a charge <laughs> to someone. And I think it should go to. Uh... Oh, it doesn't really matter because. Uh... It's for the first um, attack for the next activation. Alright, <clears throat> so let's use the Screaming Maiden. And for the Screaming Maiden, uh, she will be doing a charge. One, two, three, four. Because she has four movement, we're maximizing that one. And since uh, she passed through the former Raid Crusher, she actually gets... Oh, it's the Anguished One. Sorry, it's the Anguished One that I activated. <coughs> she gets Inspired and now has uh, four wounds, which is what we wanted to happen. Okay, and now we are rolling three dice. Fishing for swords. Okay, we are doing this. So we have a crit, support for two, which she also gets, and the actual sword. So I don't think the Formoroid Crusher can actually defend against that. And <clears throat> she effectively deals two damage as her base, but we have that plus one damage from the spectral charge. So again, that's three. Do we have any more special rules? Okay, so piercing chill blade. Rules of uh, crit do not count as critical successes or successes for defense rules. Ah, okay, so it's just for the enemy if they're trying to crit, uh, defend with a crit. Alright, so so far so good. Um, that's the end of her activation and we can give her an upgrade. And, 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 and yeah, let's uh, give her this one. But she already charged. Uh, let's give her a lousy upgrade. So this one's discarded. This one will never happen or will never be used anyway. So since there's only one enemy. Now that's it for our turn. Now let's go for the turn of the Formeroid Crusher. Nothing except breaker will happen since he is adjacent to uh, three enemies now oh wait we forgot to put the charge token there you go and <clears throat> three damage three damage to the anguished one because we want her we want everyone to survive first so we have two inspired and wounded folks, but no one's out of action yet, so I think we're doing good. And we've dealt three. Oh yeah, forgot about that. So the moment um, he destroyed the objective marker, he should have been <laughs> inspired. Okay, 
Oh, that changes a lot of things. Okay, my bad. We'll just proceed with the game. Now it's the Formoroid uh, Crusher's turn again, but okay, so we already dealt that. Now it's our turn. And we will be activating Lady Harrow. You want to activate her? No. <clears throat> Maybe we should be going with the Screaming Maiden. We'll have her one charge. One, two, three, four. And move over there. She gets inspired. And now has a better chance of hitting with her lethal uh, chill blade. Does her chill blade get additional rules? Yeah, critical hits. If we roll those, we get plus one damage. So this is four dice. We need crits. And we got crits. So you got two hits, one of them is a crit. Um, former Crusher rolls for defense and gets nothing. So that's a two plus one because we had a crit. That's uh, an additional three damage that is dealt to the Formeroid uh, Crusher. One, two, three, four, six. Okay, we have now nine. All right. Nine, three more, and three more. Uh, I think we'll win. So that is for our turn. Oh wait, I think yeah, we should uh, give her something. And I'm giving her the spirit blade just to give her cleave. Is it actually wise? <coughs> Since she already has four dice, yeah. Let's just uh, give it to. But she's the one we activated. So we're giving it to her. Okay, now the that's the uh, end of our turn. It's the former Red Crusher's turn. We get to choose who to deal the three damage to. And I think I'd go with just killing off um, Widow Kaitha. Yeah. So Widow Kaitha, I'm so sorry, but uh, yeah, you're dead. So deal three damage to her, which is enough to put her out of action. And that is the last activation of the Formeroid uh, Crusher. Now we move on to our turn, which we will let. Oh, yeah. I forgot to put a uh, charge token there. We will let the Lady Harrow um, deal, hopefully, the final uh, blow. Okay, so all of them are hits and we have a crit. Now the former Red Crusher rolls for defense. And yeah, it doesn't matter because we have a crit. <coughs> so we deal, oh man, <laughs> that just deals two damage. It's not enough um, for her to kill the former Red Crusher. We still have an extra turn. And uh, yeah, why didn't I charge? It's the last turn I should have. Anyway, but that's it. Okay, that's it for this turn. We now flip over all of the activation tokens. And we discard this. I think it's useful. I'll keep it. One, two, three and uh, four so we got uh, enervating sorrow soul leech 
Arcane Siphon, and the Grave Sand Glass. Okay. <clears throat> what do we do? We roll for initiative, back dice for a former crusher. Holy. And white dice for the more flight. And obviously that goes to the former right crusher. Okay. Now there's still nothing that he can do except for breaker. So he will deal three damage. I think I should deal that damage to Lady Harrow. So let's deal three damage to her. One, two, three. And do we have anything that? Uh, Hmm, okay. If we play this uh, power card, and I'm going to play it, I'll choose uh, <coughs> Lady Harrow. I'll be healing, so we'll be playing a Shared Agony, I'll be uh, healing her. And then choosing him as the enemy and deal one damage to him. And that's actually it. We have killed the Fomeroid Crusher. Alright. So, yeah, so I, I did a few um, boo-boos here, so we, we should have uh, flipped him once he was already here. So there were, I think, two attacks that uh, went through with just uh, one defense. I don't think it's a big deal, but if uh, one of those dice rolled a crit, okay, fine, so it's a big deal. But we just uh, went through the gameplay anyway, so that's that. But I still think... <coughs> That the Morn Flight would have won even if he was already flipped over. I mean, he was already at already at uh, six or seven at that time. So, well, but uh, who knows? Okay, so a mid-sized uh, warband would more or less be effective, but not as effective. I think it's quite effective as well, uh, similar to how effective the. Uh, Sepulchral Guard with seven warriors inside or in the warband and probably because this one had higher damage or had more cards that were able to uh, increase the damage or deal damage directly and that's one of the uh, game changers for uh, this <coughs> battle and uh, that's it thank you guys for uh, staying tuned and for watching the video hope you enjoyed it please don't forget to Subscribe and like our videos. Uh, that means uh, a lot to us. And always remember, always choose the good guys. Thanks for watching.